right, all right, all right, everyone. Welcome back once again to TD Fins Talk. This is the second part of a five-part series of us diving deep into our team mid-season series um, evaluation of our entire franchise. Uh, we already started with the defense. Um, hopefully, I shed some light on the defensive video. If you haven't checked out the defensive video yet, please go check it out because I offer a point of view that I personally, doesn't mean I gotta be absolutely right, but I personally feel like is the exact um, issue that we're having on defense and what we basically need to do to um, correct that. It breaks down the root cause of what's really going on on defense, guys. But um, part two, which is this video right here, we're gonna talk strictly about offense. Um, tomorrow, I'm going to bring part three when we talk about the coaching staff. Unfortunately, offense, I'm going to be talking about the coaching staff a little. I'm going to try to stay away from it as much as I can, but it is a huge part of the offense uh, whenever we discuss this, okay? So let's dive right in, but let me take my sip of water first. Woo. All right, fresh water. All right, guys, so offense, all right? No different from defense. No different from defense. The only difference is the first three games, we were raving about our, de our defense. The first three games, we were not raving about our offense, but we were proud of our offense because our offense looked great. We had some great play calling. Um, it didn't look um, elite. And the reason why we never put a full game on the field. We never put a full four quarters on the field. In the first three games, we either showed up in the first half or the second half, never both. That is a fact, never both, okay? So this entire season, we have yet to show consistency for a full game. And that's a fact. We have yet to show consistency for a full game, okay? But. Despite not showing consistency, we still had enough to get a 3-0 start. Why were we able to get a 3-0 start? There's so many reasons why. Let me name, you know, I was just saying, let me name some of them. I'll name all of them in less than a minute, okay? Quarterback play. Ryan Tannehill looked great. No, Ryan Tannehill looked elite in his first three games. Everybody was on Ryan Tannehill. Everybody, oh my gosh, Ryan Tannehill looking hot. Now they're bringing up the stats of, oh, in the last 9 out of 10, last 10 out of 11 games that Ryan Tannehill started, um, he's won. Quarterback play was top-notch, first three games. If quarterback play was top-notch, you know the wide receiver play was top-notch. Everybody catching balls. It wasn't just one go-to guy. It wasn't two go-to guys. You see how the last few weeks we've been saying this guy carried us, that guy carried us, those two carried us? Not in the first three games. In the first three games, Jakeem Grant, Kenny Steels, Ken Drake, Frank Gore, Elmer Wilson, Big Cat Chamondola. Oh, look at Devontae. Oh, I ain't going to go that far in the first three games. <laughs> Devontae Parker was non existent in the first three games, and we dealt with a lot of injuries again, okay? But. Receivers were on point. Running game was on point. Man. Offensive line was bowling. Like we got one of the we got a top five offensive line. Oh man, this is unbelievable. The guards pulling, we running the ball down, people throw. We got play action going. Tannehill back there got time to throw. Receivers catching the ball. Tannehill look good. Only thing was missing in the first three games, we need to put a little bit more tight end in here. We need a little bit more tight end action. Do y'all not remember this? Let me sip on that. Do y'all not remember this? We were looking amazing. Amazing. But what happened, TD? Oh, the, oh, the same old Dolphins. Doing the same old thing they always do. Building us up just to tear us down. No, that ain't what happened. That is not what happened. 
Let's not forget in the third game how we lost an offensive lineman making a sack and trying not to get get a roughing the passer call with the new rule, trying not to land on him, and he's gone for the season. But we still win the game. Next thing you know, we lose another offensive lineman the very next week versus the Patriots. Oh, no. Oh, no. Well, TD, that doesn't matter. It's next man up, TD. It's next man up, TD. That shouldn't matter. Okay. I'll give you that. It shouldn't matter. But why our quarterback ain't got no time to throw? All of a sudden, all of a sudden, the Patriots looking, uh, murdering us. Forget Teddy Hill turnovers that happen later. Let's go to the beginning. They murdering us. Well, TD, you know, we, we still got to, we still didn't play well in so many other areas. You're so right. You are so correct. But remember, if you saw that defensive video yesterday, Woo. If you saw the defensive video yesterday, one thing we didn't talk about yesterday was time of possession. And if you haven't seen the video yesterday, please go see it. I don't want you to be behind on none of this. It's, it's, it's the midseason series defense. Part one defense, okay? Go check it out first. Cut this one off. Go watch the defensive video. Come back, because I don't want I want y'all to see how everything ties in. Because what we did talk about yesterday was the time of possession. How our defense, how our defense couldn't stay off the field. And I'm not talking about because our offense was just ineffective. It's because our defense couldn't stop nobody, so they stayed on the field. Y'all, y'all, y'all forget that. It goes two ways. If your offense ain't doing nothing, you keep your defense on the field. But you also have to consider your defense stays on the field when they're not doing nothing either. When you're not getting the three and out and people are running six, seven, eight, eight minute drives down the field on you. Eight minutes drives. Seven minute drives. Not no minute and a half punt the ball. And in the Dolphins case when things got bad, not no 40 seconds and punt the ball. Offense can barely even get in the rhythm. Not only can they get in the rhythm, you got defenders all in your quarterback face. All in your quarterback. See, this ain't about Tannehill versus Oswaller yet. We're going to get there. But we ain't talking about that yet. We're just talking about general offensive line. Left side of the offensive line, you play the very next game, you play Bill Belichick, and you lose two offensive linemen. Belichick is a, is a coach that can change his game plan like that in the middle of a game. Not in the off week. No, in the middle of a game, they start attacking the left side. They start attacking the left side. Quarterback ain't got time. Trying to run the ball, barely can get the ball off. We look boo-boo the fool trash. And then when you got a quarterback, we behind. They know I got to start throwing now. Now the Patriots on the other end of the ball. Licking their fingers like they got barbecue. Like, yeah, it's time. It's time for us to eat. They dropping six men into seven men in the coverage. Quarterback like nothing is open. Then when he holds the ball, like I said, if you checked out the video that I made today, um, that I dropped um, before this one, when Adam Gates confirmed it, Everybody want to talk about Tannehill holding the ball. But Adam Gates finally confirmed it. We don't like our quarterback to hold the ball. But when we put him in situations where he has to throw, you can't blame him. Because we're down two touchdowns and we he has to hold the ball just to see if he can make something happen. Common sense. Common sense, y'all. Common sense. So now he holding the ball, he getting sacked. Now the pressure all on him, he trying to make quick throws. Now he get one pick. 
Now all of a sudden, he tried to throw the ball to it. See, and, and to me, let me back up for a second. Even the play where he made the mistake with the interception bounced off of, of a defender's foot into somebody's hand, that was a smart play. Bad situation. I can't take the intentional grounding. The pressure is here. I don't have time to really wind up and get rid of the ball. Intentional grounding would kill us. I see a man who's eligible. Let me throw it at his feet. Oh, man, I ain't got time. Oh, yes, fam. Oh, what the heck is going on? Oh, man. Oh, touchdown. Oh, look at Tanner Hill. Oh, did you see what I'm talking about? You had like he tossed the ball in the man's hands to run back. He literally at least, at least had a logic in what he was doing. Didn't work out, but at least he had a logic. I saw the man there. I tried to throw it at his feet so we I can get rid of the ball. Because if he didn't throw it at his feet and he threw it somewhere else, he ain't had time to wind back and throw it away. Out of bounds. Intentional grounding. Any other thing, any, anything else? At least he had logic, smarts about what he was doing. Just didn't work out in his favor. Unfortunate stuff. Bouncing off of somebody's foot into a, def into a defender's hands. And y'all want to put that on him? But anyway, anyway. We talked about attributables yesterday with the defense. And everything trickled down to the interior defense alignment. The defense alignment in general. And hopefully I did a good job explaining that. But y'all want to talk about attributables? That Patriots game was a clear correlation with the offensive line of what we tried to establish early. I'm one of the main people that say we got to establish the run early. And the Patriots attacked us missing our two lines. They attacked us. And it folded a lot of stuff up for us early. They put us in so many obvious situations. So when you're in an obvious situation, they can call their best defensive plays for it. The name of the game on offense, don't put yourself in obvious situations so you will always leave the defense guessing. And if your scheme is good enough, you will kill them every time, like the Houston Texans did us. They were never, not once in the game, except the last four minutes, obvious they're going to run. And that's the worst time to be in an obvious situation is when you're up. I mean, when you're down and the other team is running. Yeah, it's obvious they're going to run. But the entire game to that point, they were never in an obvious situation. Are they running? Are they passing? Is it play action? We had no idea. We were at home watching the game like, oh, they running. Oh, no, that's a pass. We even guess it. That's the name of the game. Don't put yourself in an obvious situation. And what did the Miami Dolphins do? Put ourselves in an obvious situation. Unfortunately, a lot of it had to do with injuries. It's obvious that we want to establish the run because if we can't run the ball, because we, we can't throw the ball 50 times a game. Y'all know we're not built for that. The stat came out. Our offensive line is a 2.25 second offensive line. Let me repeat that. Our offensive line is a 2.25 second offensive line. Some of the best in the league are over four seconds. Let me, let, let me give y'all two seconds to think about that. Attributables, ladies and gentlemen. So it's hard to throw deep passes and go downfield and do explosive stuff when you have a 2.25 second offensive line. But guess what? Guess what? In the first three games, shocking enough, 3.7. 3.7. Go look it up. 3.7. First two games. First three games. 3.7. The Patriots game alone knocked us down because the very next week they reported the stat. And you can actually go on stats. Um, I'll give you the website in the description. You can go on the um, website where you can see the stats and you'll see all these stats, all these different things about your offensive line and everything. And they give you weekly breakdowns. They In some, some stats, they give you quarterly breakdowns. It's ridiculous. 2.25 second line by week five. 
one week bring us down to an average like that. That means in the Patriots game, they had to be a flat two, maybe 1.8. It's crazy. Ridiculous. And y'all wonder why we limiting in the playbook. Adam Gates needs to open up the playbook. I agree, but we gotta have the personnel to do so. And we're not getting on coaches, that's tomorrow. That's tomorrow, because we got a lot to talk about with coaches. Oh, man, we got a lot to talk about. But in regards to offense, opening up the playbook, the only time we can open up the playbook, and y'all be my witness, we have opened it up here and there. And y'all tell me if these conditions warrant, um, allowed us to open it up. The only time we've opened up the playbook is when we've ran the ball successful. Then we've thrown the ball successful. And then all of a sudden, the playbook opens. Like the little trick plays and different. The only time those things work is whenever the run and the pass is working in conjunction and we're not in obvious situations. The name of the game in the NFL, y'all, you have to establish the run. If you establish the run, it will require of the defense to utilize their linebackers more aggressively towards the run. And once you establish that, now you open up the passing game with play action. And it's even better for us. Not only do we run the ball well when we do, we, we play action well when we do, and then we get in a shotgun, it's not an obvious throwing situation. Because we do a lot of halfback draws that are picking up yards when we're executing. Now defenses are off balance. Have you noticed the game we won and we've been cheering about and we've been happy? We've run the ball well. Four plus yards on almost every carry. In the shotgun, halfback draw, four plus, four plus yards almost on every carry. Opening up play action, executing well. Now you got bubble screens. Now that the defense mind is like shot. What are they going to do? If it's a bubble screen, I got to head out there right away. But what if it's not a bubble screen? Just because they got trips left. They're doing a halfback draw and they're getting four per. I got to head in. What do I do? That's when we're at our best. When it's not an obvious situation. But in this NFL, it can change like that. Two big injuries on the offensive line can change the obvious. What worked before doesn't work anymore just because the defense now pursues heavy on our weak positions. Crashing the guard in the um, center. And from that point on, we it hasn't been the same since. Hadn't been the same since, y'all. Hadn't been the same since. And then the worst thing that could have happened for the Miami Dolphin fans is week five comes and Tannehill doesn't play. The worst thing, that ain't the worst thing that could have happened. The worst thing that could have happened for us was Brock Osweiler having a, a great game that first game. You know why? It was, it was terrible for us. Because you non-football heads got blinded from our weaknesses. Guess what everybody said? Y'all even made me drink the Kool-Aid a little bit. I admit, I admit, I'll sit here and be honest. I ain't too proud. I'll admit, you had me drinking the Kool-Aid till I had to go back and reevaluate. Oh man, maybe it was the quarterback situation. Look at what Oswald is able to do with this 2.25 second offensive line. It shouldn't matter now. Oh, offensive line do taking care of business. No, that wasn't the case. You go back and look at it all. That's why I said in week six, after week five, when Brock had that good game, Adam Gase put Brock in an amazing situation, which blinded our flaws. And that was whenever I said Adam Gase, that was good coaching. Finally, that, that's whenever I was high, highest on Adam Gase. That's what you call good coaching. You blind, you you cover up our weaknesses. Our offensive line looked amazing in week five. Y'all tell me I'm lying. Our offensive line looked really good in week five with the two out for season players. With the two players out for the season, offensive line looked amazing. But then when you go take a second look 
Because everybody like, see, it ain't had nothing to do with that. It must have been Tannehill. No, when you go take a second look, we're a 2.25 second line, but Brock was getting that ball out of his hand in like 1.5 seconds. Facts. Fact. Why you think we ran so many bubble screens? We ran the ball and ran bubble screens. Ran the ball and ran bubble screens. Facts. TD ain't lying. Anybody in the chat comment section can sit here and say, no, that ain't how it went down. You a lie. You know you lying. We ran the ball and ran bubble screens. And what did I say about football? All you got to do is take yourself out of the obvious, and now you can start opening up the playbook. And what did we do? We ran the ball well, and we bubble screen well. Now they're like, oh, man, which one do I do? Now he in, now he in the shotgun. Running the ball, bubble screen. By the time the middle of the third quarter come, hype, it ain't no bubble screen or run. Now Oswala getting these nine-yard dinks, 12-yard dinks, seven-yard dinks. And now he looking like Brady. And now the defense is like, all right, let's get back focused. Now they regular. Then we ran the ball and bubble screen they behind. Never was in an obvious situation in week five. You see what I'm talking about? But we blinded ourselves. We think just because he started getting into that Brady type rhythm, oh, the offensive line looking great. No. They stopped pursuing. It's a difference for a defense alignment to come for the pass. They coming. They fighting. But when they taking the run, they pushing and watching. They ain't got that pursuit fight trying to get through. It's a di Especially when you've been running the ball successful. If you ain't been running the ball successful, they still fighting through. And if they see you, they try to tackle. But if you've been running that ball well, it ain't no more fight to get to the quarterback. It's a push and a look trying to semi-fighting to see which direction is the run going. Totally different. That's what y'all gotta understand. It made it seem like our offensive line was a four second offensive line. Yeah, it turned into a four second offensive line because there was no more pursuit. There was no more pursuit. And Gates, um, whenever we did um, run the ball, he would have an extra blocker or something. Trips to the right. Heavy package with a tight end. Had that draw will work, and the bubble screen giving him time will work. But he didn't even need the time because the ball was out of his hands in less than two seconds. Less than two seconds. Middle of the third quarter, everything opening up. Everything opening up. They in max protection with four receivers running routes. Six guys protected. Y'all got to know football, man. Y'all got to know why it looked good at that point. But all it took, all it took was another week. All it took was another week. That was our fourth win. We were four, what, what were we at that point? Four and one? Four and two or something like that? All it took was another week. He looked good. And then stuff went downhill. Why? Because defense has got to sit there and watch. Okay. No matter what, we still need to attack those weaknesses. No matter what, we still need to attack the weaknesses. But you know what? By then, those replacements on the offensive line had a little bit more experience. They had a little bit more camaraderie with the rest of the line. And guess what happened then? Believe it or not, regardless of us losing, y'all, our running game has looked very good. And when I say very, I mean very good. The last three games, our running game has looked very good. Very good. In that same game we play in Cincinnati, we running the ball down their throat. We got balance. Then all of a sudden in the second half, we stopped running the ball. Whoa, what happened? Why did we stop running the ball? We'll talk about that with coaching tomorrow. We'll talk about that with coaching tomorrow. That's a big problem with our offense. We haven't been consistent, y'all. We just have not been consistent in what works. In what works. We have not been consistent in what works. Houston, Texas game. We were running the ball. Why did we why did we stop running the ball after a while? I'm sitting there on my live stream. If y'all are watching me, y'all sitting there listening to TD. All right. 
We moving the ball. First down. Run the ball. Why did he throw? Okay. Second down. We had to throw. Or second down, we run and get two yards. Run the ball on first down every time. Period. And when the game start opening up and it ain't obvious, now you can do some of that first down passing. We shouldn't even be talking about this because it's coaching, y'all. But moving on on offense. So the offensive line blinded us, y'all. That was a huge part of the issues. We were blinded. We took those injuries. We saw in the Patriot game what that does to us. We come back and we play the Bengals. We see how that hurt us. The offensive line. Then they finally get stuff together and we don't even keep running the ball. They finally actually starting to look half decent and we're not running the ball. Because since that um six since that fifth game, y'all tell me if I'm wrong. Since the sixth game, okay, the last two games, the offensive line been giving them time. The offensive line has been giving us time. It ain't been the greatest, but it's been better than 2.25. Because Brock's still been able to sit back there and throw the ball. Facts. They've actually improved. As a second unit, those replacements actually have been improving. They've given us more time. Brock has been able to release the ball. But I do you one better. We take a whole nother shift in the last two weeks at the receiver position. Now, offensive line finally giving the quarterback, and mind you, it's the backup quarterback. He, they finally giving him time. But now, who is he to throw to? I ain't talking about last game with Parker, even the game before. You see what we went through? What's hurting the Miami Dolphins on offense right now, believe it or not, let me, let me help you understand something. It's not as big as it seems. I'm going to be honest with y'all. It's not as bad as it seems. And I'm going to break this down for y'all for a second, okay? Because first off, the offensive line has improved over the last two weeks. I know y'all won't recognize it because we put ourselves in a lot of pass situations. So they've been attack, attack, attack against us. And we've had some breakdowns. So it doesn't look that way. But I watch us and I replay us over and over. Our offensive line has actually looked better and better as time has went since week four. Week four, pure trash. Week five, trash. Week six, garbage. Garbage is a little better than trash. Some people dig through garbage and find good stuff. Trash is just trash. Week seven, all right, hey, the decent, you know, refurbishable. Last week, I like what I saw in our offensive line. I don't like how we changed up on the play caller, but I actually like what I saw in the, until the fourth quarter. By the end, them guys was gassed. They were tired. They were tired. Too many um, pass, too much pass protection situations where we were behind trying to come back. They fighting every play. They, they they got gassed out. Offensive line is actually getting better, y'all. So in that middle spurt after three and zero, those three games between that where we went on um, one and two, that was growing pains. But believe it or not, I think that it's fixed. Believe it or not, it's not going to be elite, but it's 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 enough. I think even right now, with our injuries on O-line, it's enough. I, some of y'all will disagree. Go watch the film, man. Go study it. It's enough. Those, those, those um, when we went one and two in that three-game stretch, that's whenever they had their growing pains. That's when they were getting abused. But it's enough right now because we've been running the ball well. Facts. We have been running the ball well. We just haven't run the ball enough. Brock has had time to throw the ball. But that's, that, that's a good segue into now quarterback play. Quarterback play. First three games, Teddy Hill amazing. Then he plays against the Patriots, look terrible. Offensive line, we talked about that. He has his own faults in it. But don't forget what we learned yesterday on defense, attributable. Some of his mistakes and things that he dealt with were from attributables. Things around him that were happening. Holding the ball too long, attributable. Gates even confirmed it for me. You can't blame him for holding the ball too long because sometimes we ask him to do stuff like hold it longer to make something happen for us. 
And whatever happens after that, whether it's a pick, whether it's a fumble, sack, whether it's a, oh, let me hear, oh, I'm rushed, let me get rid of it. Oh, what a fluke play bouncing off a leg, touchdown. Those are attributables. But we want to just look at the guy and say he's the reason. You all just want to scapegoat. Those who are down on Tannehill, you want to scapegoat. But you're the same people that's going to be looking for a scapegoat when, 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 when the front office listens to you, get rid of Tannehill, go get somebody else in the draft. First round, number one pick, overall. You're the same people that's going to be looking for a scapegoat whenever four seasons later, you're like, man, fire the coaches, man. We got the number one pick and they got him looking trash. Oh, it's the coaches now. Then they fire the coaches. Oh, man, we need an offensive line. Now, now we got a brand new quarterback, a brand new coach. Uh, now we're looking for an offensive line for the next four years. Now we got an offensive line. Then we go all the way back eight years later, which it looked like the time frame for Tannehill. Eight years later, we're about to say, oh, man, we need another quarterback. He was never the answer. No. Yo, your, your prob the problem you had from the get-go is going, you went backwards. You went backwards. You went quarterback, coach. Back to the quarter, uh, no, quarterback, coach, O-line, and now you're back to the quarterback. No, you went backwards. You got to reverse that. O-line first. Fix the O-line. You have to give your quarterback zero excuses. And when we finally gave him zero excuses at the beginning of the season, he was 3-0. Before he got hurt the last time, not this shoulder, but before that, he was like 6-7 and because that was a good O-line. You have to give your quarterback zero excuses. And guess what? When you give him zero excuses and give him a stud offensive line, you might actually sit back and be like, wow. Look at how good Tannehill can be when he has a line. Long term, consistently. If the O-line stays healthy. Now we didn't have to go get another quarterback and waste 12 years, 8 years. Now we didn't have to fire the coach and keep putting it on him. Y'all going backwards. You're going backwards. Fire Tannehill. Four years later, it's Gates. Then you're talking about the O-line. Now you all of a sudden, yeah, it's the quarterback. Reverse that. Go get your O-line. If you got a quarterback who the coach is signing off on as this is our guy, and you got your O-line, whose fault is it? It is the coach's fault. Then you get rid of the coach. Because the only way it can't be the coach's fault if the coach just comes out and say, it's Tannehill, I'm getting rid of him. But that ain't the case. The coach is saying Tannehill is the one. That means that the, it's the coach's fault because the coach ain't getting it done. You say he the one, you say this is your O-line, then why isn't it getting done? It's on you. Because if you're putting it on somebody else, you need to say that up front. Y'all got to understand how this works. Y'all going backwards. You're going backwards. And since you want to go backwards, it's going to cost our franchise 5, 10, 15, 20 years. Just to keep on having these problems, man. You're going backwards. I don't know how many times I got to say it, but I'm going to keep saying it. Do you know what the chances are of finding a better quarterback than Tannehill? That's what y'all... See, that's all... I'm not saying you can't. That's it. Y'all got to understand. TD, is he, TD understands. I would want the most elite quarterback as possible just like y'all. But do you know how hard it is to find a better quarterback than Tannehill? Do you know how hard it is? And I don't care what none of y'all say. Tannehill is by far in the, in, the, in the upper, in the second quartile of this NFL. 32 starters in this NFL. Tannehill is 16 or better. I don't care what none of y'all say. And if you ask me, I've always had him around 11. Somewhere around there. Do you know how hard it is to find a better? We're not trying to go out and get the same. Then what was the purpose of wasting the draft pick? We're not trying to go get the worst. What was the purpose of wasting a draft pick and getting worse? Do you know, guys, we done been through 17 or 19 qu quarterbacks since Marino. Do you know that was less than 20 years ago or something like that? 
We almost average one quarterback a year, and Tannehill's going on seven years. So that tell you, technically, we averaging like 1.5 a year. Do you know how crazy that is? Do you know how hard it is to find a, a better quarterback than Tannehill? I don't know how to keep saying this. I, I don't speak no other language. I need to learn how to speak another language because people ain't getting this. You're panicking. That's what it is because you have no composure to yourself. Mental composure. Break stuff down and ask why is it happening. Tannehill throw a pick. Oh, we need a new quarterback. Okay, he made a mistake. Like every n name a quarterback that don't went through this league without throwing a pick in the season. I'll wait. Oh, nobody? Oh, okay. I just wanted to make sure. Everybody throw them. Of course, some people throw them less than others. But whether you want to believe it or not, Tannehill ain't this big pick guy. Oh, I can count on Tannehill to give me two a game. That ain't Tannehill. Tannehill had games where he don't throw a pick. He might have a game where he got one. And you may have occasions where there are two. But recognize gameplay situations. Most of the games where Tannehill throw two picks in a game, we done lost that game by 20 or more points, 10 or more points, two possessions. And, and I can guarantee one of those picks had to come in the fourth quarter. Trying to make something happen when nothing is there, and Gates said it the other day. You ask for him to do things that any quarterback shouldn't have to do. You can't fault him for certain things. Holding the ball too long. Throwing an interception. And he's not even a high pick guy. I don't even know why I'm defending interception. He's not even a high pick guy. Y'all killing me, man. Tannehill ain't out here throwing four, five picks a game like Jameis Winston. Or if it's magic, three games, four games ago or something like that. He not doing that. Tannehill is managing the game. Strike. Completion. 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 Oh, man, that was a pick. Rare, doesn't even happen often. And we forget about all the good stuff that's happening. Brady bring his, his team down the field last night and throw a pick in the end zone. You think anybody sitting there talking about, hey, look at Brady. If that was Tannehill, oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, Tannehill giving the game away. He giving the game away. You think your Patriots wouldn't have got that pick six last night? If the Patriots didn't get that pick six last night and Buffalo would have caught that touchdown, where the guy act like he caught it, but he didn't. If they, if Buffalo would have caught that touchdown, Buffalo would have went on to win that game. Do you think anybody would have pointed a finger at Brady's pick in the end zone? It's crazy. Look how we do our quarterback. Why you think the Patriots are successful? They ain't going to do their quarterback like that. Well, TD, because look what he's done for the franchise. Well, give your quarterback a chance, too. Well, TD, he's not going to get it done. Of course he not if you keep saying he ain't. Y'all kill me, man. Come on. Y'all don't understand the influence the fan base has on the front office. And, and I hate that. The fans should never have influence on the front office. They should never have influence on the front office. I mean, we fans and we should have a say to a degree. But there's too many non-football fans that really know football in every single franchise. They are spectators. Football is their entertainment. Not TD. This is my team. I am a G, an external GM. And I'm not saying that to give myself kudos. Oh, I'm a GM. You know, I know this game. No, I put myself in the foot, in the place of a GM because I want to see my team be successful. I'm sitting here calling what I know they need, what they don't need. Why did we do that? Why did we pick this one up? Why didn't we go get that person? Why did we trade this person? He wasn't the problem. He was. Or oh, why didn't we go pick up somebody like today? I keep checking my freaking phone for an update because I am waiting before 4 p.m. 
I'm not talking about no free agents. I am waiting on Miami to at least make one freaking deal. One freaking deal. One. One deal. Let me make sure I ain't missing nothing either. I got a quick update. Sorry. See? We just signed Ziggy Hood, defense alignment. I like it, and this is a segue, because this defense, and we supposed to be talking about offense. We just signed defense alignment Ziggy Hood, but he was a free agent. He been out there, y'all. He is a veteran free agent. More depth on the ends, because from my understanding, I thought Ziggy Hood played um, defensive end. And I'm hoping that he switched to tackle at some point because, so this can make sense to me. And I don't think so. But we'll see. I'll get more in depth about that. But I am waiting by 4 p.m. Eastern time, which we got less than three hours, for them to make a trade with a player that is currently on a roster that can make an impact. On the defensive line, interior, interior, unless Ziggy Hood is going to fill that gap. But I don't know, because I thought he was the defensive end. Or the offensive line for more depth. Or even a linebacker. But I'm waiting. We're going to see if that happens, man. But I'm telling y'all, listen, man, our offense. Let me get back to our offense, okay? Quarterback play. Brock Osweiler had we. I kept saying Brock Osweiler been actually playing well, but I'm putting that as a, on a standard of a backup. If I put that on the standard of a starter, no, you know this ain't uh, no, not bad, but no, this isn't cool because the last few games, even the Texans, he missed too many targets, thrown behind them. They had to they running in stride. They got a backup to catch to slow their momentum, overthrown, underthrown. Throwing the ball away, I like when he throws the ball away when we have to, but not when he's running towards the sideline and there is 12 feet between him and the sideline and he throws away. You got 12 more feet. A defensive lineman ain't finna catch you. He's already six yards behind you. Keep running until you get to the end, just in case somebody gets open, just like Deshaun Watson did you, did us. I saw him break out of the pocket, nobody open. He headed to the side, but keeping his eyes out. Oh, there we go, 30 yards. Any quarterback get long enough, they're going to find an open receiver because the receiver is going to go get open. Quarterback play hasn't been great, and I know y'all want Tannehill back now. And except the haters. No, we just need a new quarterback, but right now you want Tannehill back. Period. He is, Osweiler is not a deep threat whatsoever. So we got the offensive line issues, the quarterback play. Now the receivers played so great early in the season, but then the injury bug hit them. Offensive line gets better, y'all. Offensive line gets better. Like I said, offensive line has actually gotten better. Quarterback play starts to slip a little while the offensive line gets better. So it's starting to be a wash. And then now we got receiver problems. We haven't been able to catch a break on the offense. That's why I say it's not that bad. And let me tell you why it's actually gonna get better. In my opinion, it's going to get better, okay? Here's why. Offensive line is improved. It was a beautiful thing this morning to see an alert on my phone that says, in my fantasy team, because I got both of them in fantasy. Ryan Tannehill changed from out to questionable. Kenny Stills changed from out to questionable. Oh, that made me feel so good. Even if they don't end up playing this next game, that made me feel so good. And according to Gates, there is a chance that they will. He's not saying they will. But there's a chance they both want to be out there now. So if Tannehill comes back with the improve the way the offensive line been improving, I know see people are gonna challenge me saying that the O-line's improving. 
Y'all gotta go watch it, man. These guys aren't studs. You can, I mean, on a scale of one to ten, like I said, we had eights and now we got sixes. Those guys have upped their game to about a a, a seven, a, a six point nine seven, and that's good. That's good enough. That's good enough. What I'm talking about here is good enough, not great. They're good enough to still carry us. So yeah, there's gonna be some breakdowns here and there, but we got a game plan to overcompensate for those. So at the end of the day, our quarterback comes back. The offensive line is improved. And that's just sheer improvement internally. Now I ain't talking about, oh, we added this piece and that piece and it's improved. It's gotten better. And we did add a piece, but it's gotten better. So at the end of the day, receivers start coming back. Now we got Devontae Parker healthy, which, which is we'll talk about in coaching tomorrow, whether he was healthy the whole time or not. But y'all saw what he was able to put out for us. Made some big time catches, tough catches, in coverage, balled out. We got Devontae Parker back. Looking like he played number one receiver type football. And if Brock didn't overthrow that deep ball, if he didn't overthrow that deep ball, that was a touchdown. Parker had the seven, eight feet separation going, overthrown. Not by no foot, not by no, oh, if I stretch out, seven, eight yards overthrown. Come on, man. Tannehill comes back. Parker going to be on one side. Kenny Steele's unchanged from um, um, out to questionable. He comes back. You still got Grant. You still got Amendola. And ain't it funny how Amendola not outlasted everybody? Why do we get Amendola, man? He probably ain't going to play the full season. Maybe, but it, it ain't it funny how he done outlasted everybody? You got Drake and Gore healthy. Things might actually just come together for us immediately, y'all. They might come together for us immediately. Albert Wilson is the pain when that hurt. But that just means um, Grant got to step in and do what he, um, what he was doing, which he's fully capable. Y'all know that. Come on, y'all know Grant is capable of doing what Wilson do, does. Actually, Grant is faster, if you ask me. I remember when they high five to the end zone, Grant actually catched them, and it looked like Grant slowed down to run with him. Things actually going to shape back up on our offense, y'all. I'm telling y'all, you heard it here first. It's going to get better. It is going to, because that offensive line actually have an internal self-improvement. I know some of y'all don't see that either. It's just, that's that's what, that's the part. That's probably what's going to hold you up on this video too. You're not seeing that. The offensive line is actually looking like they're getting better. All y'all going to do is point to look at the Texans. We had all kind of breakdowns. No, sir. We were effective in the first part of that game. When we got out of obvious situ when we got into obvious situations, that's whenever they were getting killed because they could just go full speed at the quarterback, sending the, sending the extra guy or just bull rushing. And we can't put our offensive alignment in that situation. And a lot of that, and I, and I ain't trying to make no controversy, but a lot of that was on Brock. A lot of that was on Brock. Even though we should have ran the ball more, some of the plays that Gates did call for Brock, I don't know why he called them because I don't, he should have known Brock can't execute everything not consistently and accurately but some of those plays Tannehill would have made those deep balls those mid-range ones the, uh, Brock had like almost four four almost picked plays like literally defenders got their hand on it and dropping it he throwing it to the back of the defender defender turned around like oh oh man if I would have just turned to have a second early come on man I'm telling y'all it's actually about to shape up and then um, Albert Wilson on IR. So the reality is Albert Wilson actually might even be back before the end of the season. He might be back before the end of the season. Things actually might shape up for the Miami Dolphins. And TD's not going to be no fool, no boo-boo the fool and stupid. I'm not going to say that they absolutely are. We, it's still yet to be seen. But starting this week, if we get Tannehill and Steels back, things are going to start to shift. You might, you might be shocked. You might be shocked. Get this W versus the Jets and going to Green Bay with a little bit of momentum and with a little bit, a little bit better health. And depending on what we do before 3, 3 p.m. Central today, 4 p.m. Eastern, 
If we could just make one move on the D-line, and I hate it because Gates already said in the press conference yesterday, I, I mean, it's not likely. I don't think, you know, I don't think they're going to be making a move or anything. It's not likely. Oh, that, that kind of just broke me. But we'll see. We'll see. But when we talk about these coaches tomorrow, don't forget, we're going to also talk about Tannenbaum and Greer. They in my hot seat. We'll talk about that. We're going to talk about that, y'all. But our offense, man, that's what's going on, y'all. It started with injuries. We made the best of them, but the best wasn't good enough because one injury led to another. And then and I haven't even mentioned when Tunsil went out that game. That game, oh, my God, I didn't even mention that game. That game where I thought we actually had a chance, and then all of a sudden, man, see, that's what I'm talking about. Teams have get, have gotten our number. They're already attacking us on the left side. And when Tunsil went out, three guys, the center, the left guard, and the left tackle went out, y'all remember what happened in that game? I think the player got fired the next day. Who replaced Tunsil? Oh, my gosh. It was like five plays in a row, all because of him. I think that was Teddy Hill's injury. Came around the corner on him. Came around the corner on him. We still was in that game. And then we just got exposed. They were sitting everything that side at that point. They knew we can get back there at will, and they did. Attributables, guys. Attributables. It start going downhill, and then when we fix that, now that's done. And when we fix that, now we ain't got no receivers. Now we fit. Now we at least bring Devontae Parker back. But now you see what I mean? Attributables, man. Now, now, now the defense is glaring again. All attributables. So at the end of the day, man, offensively, guys, I don't think it's bad as it seems. We just had a rough go. We actually, we've made the best we can out of our problems that we've had recently. And, 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 and let me back up. It wasn't even the best because we could have at least got, I know we could have won two more of those games. Even with our injuries. But let me be fair, TD be fair. No, no, no. Let's say we could have won one more of those games. We should have beat the Bengals. I ain't going to never get that up. I'm never going to give that up. We should have definitely beat the Bengals. Just not going to give that up. No. You can't get that on me. No. TD ain't giving that. Y'all know we should have beat the Bengals. I don't know why we stopped running the ball, but once again, that's coaching. That's coaching, y'all. Who else was it? Um, Shouldn't have lost to Detroit either. Think about it. Shouldn't have lost to Detroit either. The way that game was going... But I'm not going to say we should have won two of them, but we should have won at least one. You know how different, how much different it would have been? Five and three? Now we're four and four. Now we have to have great football the rest of the way. Even in a loss, we have to have great football. Period. Because make, not making the playoffs this year is unacceptable for this franchise. You're going to hear TD on a whole nother level. It is unacceptable. I don't want no wild card, but it is unacceptable to not at least get that. Unacceptable. And I looked at I looked at it um as of right now, if the playoffs started today, believe it or not, we're eighth. We're eighth. We are eighth, y'all. If the playoffs started today. So the offense, man, it's going to get better, y'all. Y'all keep your head up. It's going to get better, but Gates got to call better games. He has to be consistent with what works. And we're going to talk about more of that tomorrow when it comes to coaching, guys. But let me, I'm going to go ahead and end it on that note, y'all. Thank you for tuning in to TD Fans Talk. Hopefully, I've helped some of y'all um, look at things in a different perspective because I, I'm just tired of everybody saying, all oh, this and all that, all this and all that. I'm kind of tired of it, man. And yeah, I know some of y'all going to say, well, we still need to use, utilize the tight ends more, different things like that. Of course we do, but what are we to do when we need the tight ends to help in pass protection? It's attributables. All of it's for a reason. I ain't even talk about the tight ends because that's how I feel about it. We can send a tight end out, but now we're sitting, probably sitting a free rusher or, or a one-on-one -on -one where we need the help. We need the tight end help. One of the reasons we've been successful in the run as well is because our tight ends have actually been sealing their, their corners. 
They've been coming downhill on that second level, picking up a linebacker. They've been doing some good stuff, what I see on film. The stuff that goes unnoticed. Nobody talks about what the tight ends are doing in the blocking game. Nobody talks about it. Nobody's talking about that that defensive end that they're helping the um they're helping the left and right tackle with. Nobody's talking about that. Nobody. But I'm I'm seeing it, and I want y'all to start paying attention to that stuff, man. But this TD fans talk, y'all. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. This is the mid-season series, um, five episodes. This is episode number two on offense. Again, go check out the defensive video if you haven't. Um, but this is defense is done, offense is done. Tomorrow, I'm going to love it because we got to talk about these coaches. That's what I've been waiting on. Coaches in front office, baby. That's what I've been waiting on. That is what I've been waiting on, guys. So y'all tune in. Y'all get ready for this. Um, this is TD Fins Talk, y'all. I love y'all. I am out. Peace.